today I'd like to talk to you about uh, how to get Mathematica on your system without spending a lot of money. So you can go out and you can buy a desktop license, and I think it's $359 a year for that, uh, which I think is very pricey. It's a great program, really great to have, uh, but there is a cheaper way to get it. It comes standard on a Raspberry Pi. And so uh, I've got a Raspberry Pi 3, which I believe I paid $35 for. I bought it in a can of kit, which meant it means it comes with a case, power supply. It might have cost $50 with, the, with that. And then, of course, you, you, you need the, uh, the memory card. Uh, and that was another 20 bucks or something like that. So I think nowadays you can get the Raspberry Pi 4 kind of kit for around $100. And the Raspberry Pi 4 has 8 gigabytes of memory in it. So it's a pretty good uh, little computer. Uh, it beats out a cr Cray supercomputer from the 80s. So it's nothing to sneeze at. And so once you do that, what does it look like? Well. Uh, I'm on my Pop! OS system right now, and uh, this, is, this is Mathematica running on my Raspberry Pi. And I have, it, uh, I have it set up, so I'm using VNC, which means that from my Pop! OS system, which is essentially an Ubuntu system, I'm able to have a VNC connection to my uh, Raspberry Pi, which allows me to do whatever I need to do inside of the Raspberry Pi here, uh, set it up, and use any of the programs. So, uh, you know, here's Mathematica, here's Wolfram. Uh, I'm not even sure what this is. Is this the full Wolf Wolfram Alpha environment? I'll have to look at that, but certainly this is the full Mathematica, and uh, so for about $100 you can get a kind of kit for the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte and set it up and have this program. Now, a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, I tried setting up VNC from the command line by SSHing into my uh, Pi, and it didn't work. I, I worked on it for several hours, and it wouldn't, wouldn't work. So eventually I went over and stuck a monitor on my Raspberry Pi, which is normally headless, and uh, I saw that I did not have the module for VNC installed. So I had to install that. So let me run over to the terminal here. And uh, we'll see here that I had to do a uh, uh, apt get install of the real VNC dash VNC dash server. And once I did that, I was able to go over to the uh, to the Raspberry Pi and turn it on. And the way you do that is you go into this little Raspberry here, and then into Preferences, and then into the Raspberry Pi Configuration. And when you're in there, you go into Interfaces, and you enable VNC. Okay, and uh, once you do that, then uh, you can go into your uh, Ubuntu system or your Pop! OS system and uh, install Remena and I use the Pop! Shop for that so let's uh, let's open the Pop! Shop here Pop! Shop and search for Remena that's R-E-M-M-I-N-A and just click install. I installed from the flat pack, from the flat hub, uh, and not the Debian package. Uh, Debian package, it's, uh, a lot of the repos are dropping support for various 
uh, Debian packages. So I think it's probably best to just install the flat packs. Seems to be the way the world is going. So just install that. And then once that's going, you start it up and you go to install it and it does not install. Uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't, you start it up and it does start up uh, and you go to connect and it doesn't connect. And you get a message back. Let me see if I can, I'm having a little trouble seeing the, uh, the highlighting here. There we go. You get this message back, it says unknown authentication scheme from the VNC server. And uh, that's normal. You have to go into your Pi, then you can SSH into your Pi, or you can walk over to it and do it. And you want to do the sudo VNC password dash service. And this is going to start up the uh, VNC password service. And at that point, it's going to ask you to enter a password to make one up. So enter a good password in there, and then uh, you'll have to uh, enter it a second time to authenticate it uh, or to, uh, to validate it. And then uh, you'll have to go into this file here, the slash root slash dot vnc slash config dot d slash vnc server dash x11. You go into that and uh, I do it with Vim, I don't like Nano, but you use whatever editor you want, and you add this line to the bottom, authentication equals VNC off. And uh, then your file should look something like this, and uh, save it, and then do a sudo system control restart VNC server dash x11 dash service D on your Raspberry Pi. And at that point, you should be good to go Jump back into uh, your Ubuntu system, go into Remina, and connect to your Raspberry Pi's uh, computer over VNC. And at that point, it's going to ask you for the new password you just put in there for your VNC password service. And what you end up with is something that looks like this. And uh, so, as I, uh, as I want to point out, uh, Mathematica is, I believe, $350 a year for a license. Uh, but it comes for free with a Raspberry Pi. So let's actually take a look, look at that. The cost of uh, Mathematica. Here are the pricing options. So, for a home and hobby here, that's where I fall in here. Uh, it's either $177 a year, or it's $354 plus $177 a year. So, I think that's quite a bit. It's a really great program, but it's still it's expensive. I think if you're a student, uh, let's see what it what students pay for it. Students are $83 a year. That's, that's better, but it's still expensive. If you're not doing anything particularly sophisticated with it, if you're learning it or whatever, you might as well get yourself a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I have a Raspberry Pi 3 on here uh, that I bought some years back, and it cost me $35, and then the case and uh, all the other stuff was another thirty dollars or so. Uh, so for about seventy dollars, I I have a Raspberry Pi, but you can get a one of the new ones, Raspberry Pi Four with eight gigabytes of memory. So it's got quite a bit of memory. Uh, I guess a, there's a Canna kit which has everything that you need. So the basic kit is $90. Uh, this, this one here, for $119, you get a 32 gigabyte uh, uh, of storage. That's a uh, micro uh, SD card that comes with it. So yeah, I think that this would be the, the thing to get. Uh, 
let's see the difference here. This one's got So this one's got a power supply, heat sinks, uh, the case, fan, USB reader, and the HDMI cable. This one has got what? It's got a quick start guy. Well, that's got it. It's got a, a white case. I don't know that that's worth extra money. And it has a keyboard and mouse with it. So if you have a keyboard and mouse, then you don't need that. Well, actually, if you if you're doing what I'm suggesting, you're going to be running it headless. You certainly don't need a keyboard and mouse for that. So it looks like $120 can get you uh, an 8 gigabyte system. Now, the system I'm running, I think, only has 2 gigabytes of memory. Maybe it has 4. Uh, I'm not sure. But let's see now. You can see that you know, there's a little bit of screen tearing. And it's a little bit pokey. Uh, let's start up another program here. Let's start up, uh, I don't know, Scratch. And you can see it took a little while to start that up because uh, I don't have that much memory in, in my system. Uh, I think you'll find that the, uh, the new Raspberry Pi 4 is a lot better. Anyway, uh, I hope you find this interesting and uh, helpful, and I thank you for watching.